All right, folks, today's video is on projectile motion, projectile motion. Today we're going to talk about a cannon, hence, you know, the picture of a cannon out there actually firing around. So today's question is going to address a cannon, and not only a cannon, but a cannon firing a round. And the round is actually going to be fired directly upward in our um, question. So it's very synonymous to uh, throwing a ball up in the air. The air is going to, the ball, not the air, the, the ball is going to go up fighting gravity, fighting gravity, fighting gravity till it comes up to a point of zero speed and it can't fight gravity anymore and then it comes back down to the earth. So today's question is exploring how high is this uh, projectile going to go? So, um, our question, a cannon points straight up, shoots a 45 kilogram cannonball. The initial velocity is 125 meters per second. Assuming the acceleration due to gravity is, not ID, but is 9.1 meters squared. Meters per second squared, sorry. What is the highest point the cannonball will reach? And our options for answers is 593, B is a 796, C is 1,256 meters, and D is 1,593 meters. Now, we have uh, three type of uh, formulas that I use when it comes to these type of problems. And um, these are gravity uh, problems, but we have to look at this, all right? Don't get weirded out by all the uh, numbers. V um, is basically, um, V0 is your initial velocity at the start of something. And then V1 would be your final velocity. G is the force of gravity, 9.8 meters, meters per second squared, and T represents time. Um, this is, uh, you know, if we're going to find our um, final velocity, um, here we have our final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus uh, gravity times 2, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and then delta y, which means a change in height, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Y is uh, representative of height, and y, Z, y O is our initial height. Um, so when we see the O's there, it just means kind of like our initial one would be our final speed. So like we had here, our initial final speed, our initial speed squared, final speed squared. So our height, initial height, initial speed, and then we have time here. So if we go back to the question, it's not really giving us any information about time, which is going to force us to kind of go with the middle equation because there's no time. So let me just jump back. So now what we want to do is we want to find out our change in height, <clears throat> which is delta y. Does the square means delta, and that just means change. So we go from our initial height to our final height, and that represents this distance represents the change in height. So our cannon's going to be fired from the ground, and then we're going to get to final height if we want to know our um, highest point that the cannonball is going to reach. And I know I used a bullet or a projectile side of a cannonball. I'll get emails about that. But, alright. We're doing the best we can here. <laughs> so we're going to go with the middle um, equation. Uh, bup, 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 bup. I just want to make sure. Um, alright, so yeah, we're going to use this because time is not specified. That's a little note I put in there. And we kind of talked about it again, but we're going to have to, uh, you know, now we picked this formula, but it's not really usable like this now. Okay. So it's not really usable like this because we want to find the change in height. So we're going to have to manipulate this equation and it's no big deal. We can do it easy, but why are we going to manipulate the equation? If we're trying to find Delta Y again, if we, and this is the y-axis, all right? So zero represents the initial point, and this is why we use y, okay? Why use y? Because it represents the height above the surface on the y-axis. So um, how do we do that? First, we have to set our 
final velocity to zero because at this point, the highest height, it's going to be zero. The speed's going to be zero. The V velocity is going to be zero. All right, so that's why we're doing that. So we set that to zero here in the equation. All right, um, and another reason why we do this because we set it to zero because we know that at that point we're not fighting gravity anymore, and gravity is going to start pushing us down. So if it starts to push us down, that's the highest height that we're going to attain in this uh, problem. Um, then we need to subtract v initial squared from both sides. So we do that. And basically what happens when we subtract it from both sides, um, these two are going to cancel out and it's just going to leave us with negative v initial plus uh, or, or 2g um, delta y. And then at this point what we need to do is we need to divide 2G from both sides so we can get this guy all by himself. So when we divide 2G on both sides, um, we get this and these 2Gs will cancel and we've isolated Y. Now, I like to keep it clean. So this is what we finally wound up with, but we can just flip, we can just make it jump, jump both sides and flip it around. So I like to keep the thing that I'm identifying on the left side because as um, Americans, we read from left to right. So I like to put the most pertinent information on the left and then as you go along. So these two mean the same thing. They just switch sides. Delta Y is on one side, it goes to this side negative v initial squared over 2 times gravitational pull is on that side. Alright, so it's no big deal. We can write it the same way just to keep it clean. It means the same thing. Now back, I just, I can't overstress enough because a lot of people are like, oh, you don't explain things clearly enough. Delta Y represents a change in height on the Y axis. That's how we need to look at this. That's why we formulate the formulas that way. Delta Y change on the y-axis so this is vertical height um, all right so talk that out again and you can pause and if you need to soak in you can do that um, so delta y is the distance from the surface where the cannon or project projectile is launched to the point where it can no longer fight gravity anymore and then it falls back to earth let's see distance from the surface that the projectile is to the top where it can no longer fight gravity and falls back to Earth. Okay. So, bang, bang. So now we have to plug in our numbers. And, okay. Our initial speed in the question was 125 meters per second. We plug that in. And gravitational pull is 9.8 meters per second squared. There should be a parentheses here so just uh, make a note of that um, when I'm like working with programs and I'm trying to actually get the symbols right but um, I'm getting better at it and future videos will show or demonstrate that so basically at this point we have a negative number in the bottom when we um, when we square this it's going to become uh, positive and when we square this it's going to become positive because two negatives equal positive um, we have to take care of what's in the parentheses first so when we square when this little square thing happens this final answer is going to become positive and then multiply it by two um, again orders of uh, operation please excuse my uh, dear Aunt Sally so the parentheses have to be moved removed first so squaring is actually going to make these numbers positive and our final delta y number is going to be positive so if we square <clears throat> sorry if we square 125 uh, we're going to get a big number uh, 15,625 square goes away because that's our number of meters per second and if we uh, multiply uh, well first we got a square uh, when we multiply and then we square and we deal with that, then we come up with a number um, 19.6 squared, and the squares go away, and then we wind up working with this number of 115,625 divided by 19.6, and then we come up with our magic number.
and I'll give you guys time to just plug that into your calculators. And after we come up with this number, after we divide it here, Fifteen six twenty five divided by nineteen point six is going to give us seven nine seven point one nine one feet. So if we come back to our selections, seven ninety seven is closest to seven hundred and ninety six meters. So um, that is our answer. So um, I thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Um, these are some of the questions that you're going to see on the mechanical comprehension areas of military aptitude tests. So um, it's something that you want to become familiar with. You don't necessarily have to um, remember, um, you know, the three. I just I've just put them out there because ultimately I put the formulas out there. But ultimately. What you're going to have to know to work this question is what we transform delta y into. So delta y, um, this is initially what you have to remember when you talk about a um, projectile motion problem and when you're talking about height change, how high will the projectile go? Um, it is um, the initial velocity after it leaves the muzzle over two times gravity. Um, which is in meters per second squared. So um, I took you through all that because I just wanted you to understand how I came to comp compute uh, delta y. So basically, that's the question. That's our final answer. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And um, just share on your social media and networks as well. Thank you.